The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. You can earn continuing education credits through ACI's online CEU program. Visit www.concrete.org to register. ACI conventions provide an opportunity for networking and for keeping up to date with the latest in concrete technology and practices. Our next speaker is Passerin, Young Visitism. Uh, Passerin is a graduate research assistant in the School of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Georgia Tech. Uh, prior to starting her graduate work, she was worked, uh, or worked for four years as a young researcher at SCG Cement, the biggest cement producer in Thailand. Her talk is about the effect of processing variables on the efficiency of eucalyptus pulp fiber for internal curing. Please help me welcome Passerin. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Passerin. Um, well, um, before I start, I would like to acknowledge um, two people who also contribute to this research, which are uh, Ms. Camille, she is a student at, from France, and Dr. Curtis, she's my advisor. So, well, um, I know that most of you are familiar with using right, lightweight aggregates and super absorbent polymer as an internal curing agent. But today I would like to talk about pulp fiber, another absorptive material that also can be used as internal curing agent. Um, today I will start off by telling you a little bit about background and motivation of our research. And then I will tell you, I will tell you the experiments, results, and conclusions. So we know that the use of extremely low water to cement ratio in HPC can cause you a problem because of water loss. This water loss is from um, the hydration reaction and also the evaporation. However, not only HPC but also hot weather concrete that's subject to water loss and it requires special care after placing. Also, the cement-based plaster that's really popular in some regions, like in my country, also subject to water loss. As you can see from the pictures, this worker, he's really good and he's working under the sunlight and he's increased the water loss. But however, if he really lazy, so he does not spray um, water on the masonry surface, that surface can absorb water from your system and um, that's initiate more water loss. So this water loss caused you um, cracking and cracking is the most frequent cause of complaint. So um, can we avoid hot weather? Uh, definitely not because hot weather is predominant in many regions. Um, especially in the developing country that consumes a lot of cement and concrete this day. So, right now you might wonder because um, lightweight aggregates and superabsorbent polymer are really common and effective for internal curing. Why are we interested in pulp fiber? Um, first of all, pulp fiber came from natural, so it's green and it contributes to sustainability of concrete. Moreover, several studies have shown that um, pulp fiber also has additional advantages, like um, additional resistance to shrinkage in the cracking and provide post-cracking ductility. Moreover, it can be found all over the world. It means that it's abundant and it's cheap. So what is our motivation of, the, of our research? 
um, even though pulp fiber is really provide additional advantages for internal curing. Um, however, because it's natural, um, their properties vary. And right now, the chemical and physical features still unclear which one is more important, which one is affect more to the internal curing. So the selection, dosing, and even design of pulp fiber used as internal curing is a little bit challenging or a little bit complex. Um, on the figure, you see pie charts showing that if you have different type of wood, you have um, different chemical composition, also different fiber length. So um, these um, study came from our group, um, showed the ability to use pulp fiber as an internal curing agent. However, because the deck chemical composition and physical morphology uh, are complex. So before we can use it effectively, we should understand the effect of composition and physical morphology first. So um, what we look, what we want to understand is um, how water transfer from fiber to cement paste when it hydrates. So we looking at the fundamental structures of the fiber. Um, thinking about you have a capsule filled with water and you cut it in half, you will see it cross sections and in wet state. Pulp fiber can hold water in two states for free water in cell cavity as known as lumen or bar water to the cell wall. The, that bound water can be bound with cellulose structures, hemicellulose structures, or can be located in the core of the cell wall. So, and then how water transfer from fiber to cement paste. So, um, we borrowed this concept model from Park. He published this model in 2007 in one of the paper science um, journal. Um, they explain, oops, sorry. They explain the how fiber dissolve water in drying process. Um, in the pictures, you will see um, from saturated state until the dry state of the fiber. Um, first, fiber will dry on the surface, and then after that, the water inside the lumen will diffuse through the cell wall out to the surface, and that's required that is the internal diffusion is the key mechanism for removing water. And they came up with the idea of how to remove water, which um, represent the water that um, located in the cell cavities and also bound with the cell wall as required internal diffusions to diffuse. So we think that this should be related to our what we're looking for. So we're gonna use it in, in our research. So, um, to examine this, um, first we have to characterize the fiber properties and then we evaluate the internal curing capacities. So, how can we characterize fiber? This is all fiber characteristic that we did. Um, however, I'm going to talk only three important terms that I will talk of, about it later, which are fiber morphology absorption capacity, and how to remove water content. So how did we evaluate the fiber morphology? Um, we did the statistical image analysis of the fiber cross section. And we get the fiber diameter, lumen diameter, and then the cell wall thickness. So we took an image of the cross section of fiber and do the image analysis statistically. Um, on the, this figure show you is the statistical distribution of the fiber diameter, and this show you the statistical distribution of the lumen diameter. And the cell wall thickness is the um, difference between two of these divided by two. And okay. the absorption capacity is the amount of water that absorbed by dry fiber, which is 
really important because if you want to add the correct amount of water into your mix design, so you should know that, and then you can calculate for your water how much water that you need to add in your mix design. So um, we, it's really simple. Um, we use the methods that were proposed by Jensen in 2009, and what we did was um, try to match the fiber cement paste heat of hydration with one of the heat of hydration from the control cement paste. Um, here you see how it match, and then after that we can calculate the amount of um, we can calculate the absorption capacity later, and we use that to. Uh, to calculate for the correct amount of water that we need. The last term that I would like to mention is the hard to remove water content. As I told you, it is the amount of water that a little bit difficult to remove from fiber in drying process. So we did an isothermal drying in TGA, um, and it captured the weight change of the sample inside the chamber. If we do, um, as you, it start from 100% of the weight and then down to 20. And if we do the first derivative, you will see three zones when fiber dry. Um, first is the warm up zone, second is the constant rate zone, and the last one is falling rate zone. Um, the hard to remove water is the amount of water that transition from the constant red zone to the falling red zone. The falling red zone is the zone that show you that that drying is controlled by internal diffusion. So here's the fiber properties that were evaluated from five different types of fiber. All the fiber are from eucalyptus fiber from the same source. However, it they were processed in a different way. Um, what we see is um, their properties vary in terms of absorption capacity as well as um, chemical composition because the nature of the process. Uh, we also saw that there were no clear relationship between absorption capacity and how to remove water content, but the interesting thing that we saw was um, the relationship between how to remove water and the cell wall thickness. The thicker cell wall, you have the higher how to remove water content. So it means that the how to remove water content relates more on physical morphology. So back to the internal curing performance. Um, what we did is a torsional trinket of the cement pairs compared with the fiber cement pairs at only 0 0.01 in trained water. As you can see, even though we add only 0 0.01 in trained water, fiber still provide internal curing and reduce the torsional trinket. Here you see, this is the cement pairs at 0 0.3 water to trimmer ratio, and here's the fiber cement pairs. One thing that I would like to mention in this slide is that this two fiber has the same absorption capacity, same hard to remove water content, but different in the amount of hemicellulose to hemicellulose. So, but they both exhibited the same behavior. So it means that the chemical composition does not significantly affect the internal curing capacity. What about how to remove water content? So if we vary the amount the sorry, if we vary the amount of how to remove water into our mix, um, you see they exhibit different differently. Um, the higher how to remove water content, the better internal curing performance that you will get. And remember that how to remove water content relates to the thicker cell wall. So it means that physical morphology could be more important in, when we use pulp fiber. Um, one thing that we saw that were that we a little bit surprised 
we not expect this at all. That one fiber which has really high hard to remove water content and also really thick cell wall does not work. Any any does not work. So we take a look back our to our SAM image and we want to understand what going on what's going on. So we saw that there are fiber bond blending. That fiber has fiber blending. So it could be implied that that fiber does not um, distribute truly into the cement pairs. And that's why that fiber is not working for internal curing. So based on the results that we found, we can make these conclusions. First of all, internal curing efficiency of pulp fiber relates strongly to their physical morphology than to their variation in chemical position. Um, how to remove water content could be a meaningful parameter for pulp fiber as internal curing agent. And also it appears to be related strongly to the physical morphology. Also the higher how to remove water content fiber, the better autogenous mitigating efficiency. Also, because hard to remove water content show you that um, a slower moisture release list appear to be more favorable for internal curing. And also we confirm observation in other research the dispersibility of internal curing agent was um, really significant. So right now you might question that why slower release list is more favorable in pulp fiber is different, unlike liquid aggregates, that you want it to release water as fast as possible. So um, I would like to compare one thing to you. Um, imagine that you have um, 12, you're using 12 millimeter lightweight aggregates. Compared to fiber length, like pulp, eucalyptus pulp fiber length is only 0 0.6 millimeter. So it's about like 20 times. It's like you compare the CN tower with the small, a small maple tree. So it means that why like with aggregates, you put it in your concrete, it needs to travel like you have a travel distance from the surface of the lightweight aggregates to cement pairs. Pulp fiber, if you discard it adequately, it more through into your um, concrete, and is that water is really easy to release to cement pairs. Therefore, the faster release list of the water in pulp fiber might be too fast to mitigate any shrinkage. Um, to confirm this, we also would like to do one more thing. Um, observe the, our sample with the NMR MR with, um, machine. This is just the first result that we got from. Um, as you can see, MRI captured the proton relaxation. So what you're seeing right now is the water. The brighter the color, the more you see. Um, this is the control one, and this is the cement pairs that contain pulp fiber inside at the 0 0.01 um, entrained water. Um, this is one hour, two of this are one day. As you can see, um, the sample with the pulp fiber has the higher water content inside. Last but not least, we would like to greatly acknowledge SCG SMAN for the financial support and SCG paper for the donation of eucalyptus. Thank you. Yes, it, it can swell, but um, water is unlike um, some material when it dissolves water, and you cannot when when it dissolves water, 
and the second time that they absorb, wa absorb water, they're not going to absorb the same amount as before. Like, their efficiency to absorb water decreases decrease every time that you keep cycle your absorption. Okay, thank you very much.